Hello, my name's Layla and I'm a developer. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to get started with .NET and C Sharp. We're going to build a console application. So let's get started. The first thing we'll need to get started with .NET and C Sharp is .NET. So let's download it. I'll put all the links in the description below, so don't worry. There are two versions that you'll see on this site, and one is .NET 6. That came out last year, so that was 2021, and that's what they call long-term support. So that'll be around for several years. And then this November in 2022, we got .NET 7, and that's standard support. So that will be gone within a year. Let's just download .NET 7. It's easy enough to update. And we can just click here. You can choose it for your platform and then it will just download. Then once it's downloaded, we can double click on the executable and I already have it. So it's not going to install for me, but you can go and follow the instructions on the installer. What you want to do after you've installed it is go and check that it's installed properly. And that's when you can open up a terminal or PowerShell. So this is my one. This is a Windows terminal. And don't worry about all this other stuff here. So to check if .NET has installed properly, you type the keyword, which is .NET, and press enter. And if you get a whole load of stuff about it, then it's installed. If you want to see what versions you've got, you can type .NET hyphen hyphen list hyphen SDKs and SDK is a software development kit so you'll see that come up often and you can see what version I'm running. So we now have .NET installed on our computer but to write code we need somewhere to write it and we can use something called an IDE and that's an integrated development environment. It's just like a fancy text editor. So let's go and get one of those. There are three main options that you can download when you are working with .NET. Well, the first two are from Microsoft. We have Visual Studio, and you can get a community edition, which is free. And you can also get that for Mac, and you can get Visual Studio Code, which is cross-platform. And we'll work with loads and loads of different languages. The third option is a tool called Rider and that comes from JetBrains and that's a paid for IDE. Let's download Visual Studio Code. That's a really good place to start. You can choose whichever version you need for your platform. I'm going to choose Windows 64. Once that's downloaded, double click on it and go follow the instructions. Once it's downloaded and launched, you'll see something that looks like this. And that's it. We're now ready to write some code. You're going to need to store your code somewhere. So let's make a directory. You should choose a folder where you're going to keep all of your code. Mine is a default location, which happens to be in my user folder, and then source, and then repos. Repo stands for repository, and that's like a place where you can dump all of your code. Let's go and make a new folder. I'm just going to call this one new code. Cool. Let's go in there and I'm going to show you how to create a new .NET application from the command. Let's go back to our terminal window. So I'm just going to clear this and we are going to redirect or change directory to our newly created folder. So I type cd for change directory and then I paste that root and you can see that is the root I have here in my file explorer. And now we're there. So to create a .NET application using the CLI we type the keyword .NET and then we go new and then finally the type. Now if you're not sure of what type you're going to do you can press enter and if I make this bigger, you can see it comes with default templates. And there's a lot more templates than this. You see it has this example here, .NET New Console. We're going to do that one. .NET New Console. And we've done it. Let's open our code in Visual Studio Code. So we're going to go open folder 
and then we find it and it was new code and that's it and here we have our program when you create a new .NET application you get something called a CS proj that's a C sharp project file and this will take the name of your parent folder unless you specify otherwise you'll get something called a program.cs and this is the entry point to your application and where we need to start and those are the only two things you need to have the bin and the obj which is short for object is just stuff that .NET's going to use to create files that the computer can read so you can just ignore those now We've actually got a line of code here. This is says console.write line hello world. Hello world is a very traditional way of writing your first line of code. So let's see if that will run. And how to get it to run, we can go dot net run. And I'm expecting to see it print hello world. Really cool. So you've now got your first dot net application up and running. So Let's go and change this. Hello. I'm going to get it to say hello to me. Hello, Layla. So you can go and do this. And I use Control S. Or if you're on uh, Mac, you can do Command S. And we can go and run it again. And it says hello, Layla. There we go. We're writing code. Let's do something more interesting. Let's get it to ask us a question. Hello, what is your name? And then we can get a response back in. Now there's lots of different things called types in C Sharp and we're going to use one here. So this is a string which means text and we're going to go uh, name is equal to console dot read line and that's going to bring in whatever we type into our command line and then let's print that. So console dot right line and then this is kind of like a wrapper for some text so rather than putting this here which is called a string and you can tell that because it's got these double quote marks we can take this and put that in let's run that and see what we get So don't worry about the yellow warnings. That's because it's trying to be helpful and tell us we might not get a response. So just ignore that for the time being. Right, my name is Layla and it repeats it back to me. But that seems a bit weird. How about we get it to say hello back to me. So here I can Hayla, that's not my name. Hey. And then we can add two strings together. We can go, nice to meet you. Let's see what happens with that. Ah, you see, I forgot the space there. Whoops, let's go and add that. We can go and run it again. There we go. Hey Layla, nice to meet you. So I hope you've enjoyed that. In our next video, I'm going to show you how you can do a few more things with this console application. So don't forget to like and subscribe for more videos for all different levels. And I'll see you soon. Bye.